Good afternoon, friends, and welcome back. It has been a wild week. So we finally got moved. I took the week to just unpack and kind of get things um, situated. But today, we are going to be making marshmallows. Now, if you guys are wanting a marshmallow recipe that uses the corn syrup and the white sugar, let me know down in the comments. I have one. It is delicious. I made it for years. But today... We're going to be doing one that's just three ingredients and it uses maple syrup. So we don't have any of that processed sugar. It's just, it's gelatin, maple syrup, and water. So I hope you stick around and enjoy this delicious homemade marshmallow recipe. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is put our gelatin and water together. So in the bowl that we're going to be mixing everything in, I'm putting a third a cup of cold water and then a tablespoon of gelatin. Now I buy my beef gelatin from Azure in bulk. It's a great price and it's delicious. Just a tablespoon of that and then we're just gonna let that sit. In a medium-sized saucepan you want it to be high because the maple syrup will foam. You want a cup of maple syrup. Again, this I also buy in bulk. Um, in my area, it's cheaper to buy it this way than it is to buy it at the store even on sale. Okay. Now we're going to put a candy thermometer in this and we want it to get to the soft ball stage, which is about 230, 235. So we're going to let this boil at a medium heat. We don't need to stir it just until it reaches soft ball stage. And also, whenever you're using a candy thermometer, make sure it is not touching the bottom. If it touches the bottom, it's not going to be an accurate reading. All right, so while the maple syrup is coming up to temperature, we're going to go ahead and prep our pan. I just have a 9 by 13 casserole dish. Just enough. We're going to put in a parchment paper. You don't have to do this, but I'm telling you, if you're gonna thank me later. Just use the parchment. Double butter. So all butter, and the done is lightly greased um, the parchment with butter and now we're going to go in and just lightly dust it with some powdered sugar. Powdered sugar? Hold on. Hold on. And the way I like to do it, I know I'm going to let you, the way I like to do it is to just use one of these, a little mini mesh strainer. I found this at Goodwill. It is great for just dusting. So now this is done, it's just gonna get set aside until we're ready to pour it in. So when your maple syrup is almost up to temp, you wanna go ahead and start mixing this in. Put your hand and down and soak our fluff and, and done. So we're using the whisk attachment. Huh? And we're just gonna do this on low just to mix this up. So now we're gonna put this on high and slowly stir in our stuff, and you can see this is why we wanted a deep pan because it is really high with Eight. the foam. And we're gonna let this go until stiff peaks form and it's nice and glossy. It is good. Okay, so, well, there was a stiff peak on there, but that's what I mean, like it is standing up on its own, 
So now this is ready to go in our pan. And you kind of want to work quickly because this is going to keep setting up. And you can easily double or triple this batch and just put it in multiple pans. It can stay fresh. It'll stay fresh for about two weeks, but I've honestly never had it last more than a couple days because once I make the marshmallows, they're gone. So try to get it as even as possible, just if for more uniform marshmallows. And now this is just gonna sit, I'm gonna cover it, and it's gonna sit until everything is nice and firm, and then I'll show you how we cut and store these. Okay, so once your marshmallows have set up and are nice and firm, we're ready to cut them. But before, we cut into them. You want to sprinkle with more powdered sugar. Help them not to stick to each other. Okay. Now, Get yourself a very sharp knife and coat it in some powdered sugar. And then cut, and then cut your marshmallows whatever size you're wanting them. And then what I like to do is after you get them cut, you want to go ahead and sprinkle all sides with that powdered sugar. And that way you can store these in an airtight container, whether it be Tupperware or Ziploc bag, and they're not going to stick to each other. So here is what they look like. And if you wanted to make these thicker, you could always double the batch and do them in a 9 by 13 or you can just put them in an 8x8 and they'll be, you know, about this thick. But they are so good. So these are light, fluffy, and you do not miss that corn syrup at all. They taste marvelous. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Try out the marshmallows for yourself. Let me know how you like them. And I will see you all in my next video. Thanks for watching.